There are more species of animals and plants in the Amazon rainforest than any other ecosystem on planet Earth. But that abundance is hanging in the balance. Thousands of species are under threat in Amazon countries like Peru due to habitat loss, hunting and wildlife trafficking. Peru is one of the most biodiverse nations and its species are sought by collectors around the world. But there's also a thriving domestic trade. That's where these environmental police come in. They're stopping every vehicle that passes on this route which leads from the Peruvian Amazon up there all the way to the coast to check for trafficked wildlife. And just this morning in the San Martin region, where the Andes Mountains meet the Amazon jungle, they found a few unexpected passengers. Three dehydrated boa constrictors with their mouths bound. Luis Mendo is the head of wildlife protection for this region of Peru. This three-toed sloth was found in a passing vehicle. The police take it back up the hill into the jungle and find a tree with the kind of leaves it eats. Stressed but now back in its habitat, the sloth's chances of survival are good. It's a new attitude towards Peru's abundant fauna, says environmental police officer Fabio Reyes. La ciudadanía de la región San Martín, a nivel nacional, se recién están tomando conciencia de la importancia, la vital importancia de lo que constituye las especies de, de fauna y flora silvestre y todo el medio ambiente a través de las operaciones, porque ahora antes estas acciones constituían una, una falta, ahora constituyen delito. En otras palabras, las personas que son intervenidas con los especímenes de, de fauna silvestre, este, eh, se le convoca a la Fiscalía del Medio Ambiente, la unidad especializada, y se procede a detener a la persona y se le pone con los actuados a la Fiscalía y la Fiscalía procede a la denuncia frente al Poder Judicial por el tráfico ilegal de especímenes de flora o fauna silvestre. The laws have got tougher, but traveling deeper into the Amazon basin, we found the level of enforcement in San Martín was the exception rather than the rule. Iquitos is the largest city in the world that's impossible to get to by road. It's an island in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, and its unique location puts it at the heart of the illicit trade in protected animals. Peru says it has around 64 endangered animal species. Some of them you can find right here in Belen Market, ready for the pot. Here's one of the most prized meats, picuro or paca. There's also wild pig or peccary on sale, and even the meat of the endangered South American tapir. This is all illegal, but the law is openly flouted, and authorities say there's little they can do. Clelia Rengifo is in charge of controlling wildlife trafficking in the Amazon region of Loreto, an area larger than Germany. Van al mercado Belén y quitan lo primero que ves, porque si se quedan mucho tiempo, las personas ahí se empiezan a aglomerar y de pronto tú no sabes de dónde sale en el aire un machetazo, hasta posiblemente un balazo, un cuchillo por ahí, no sabes, entonces se pone muy peligroso. Entonces no es posible adentrarse tanto, quedarse mucho tiempo porque la gente viene a tu encima. Native communities are allowed to hunt wild animals for food, but the selling of the meat is prohibited. But old habits die hard, says this lady, butchering this protected yellow-footed tortoise, apparently while it's still alive. This animal only dies when it's in the pot, she says. And turtle soup can be eaten at any local restaurant, she adds. But we're looking for live animals like these little parrots known locally as piwichos. Marketed as friendly and fun-loving, they can fetch several hundred dollars in the U.S.
We posed as tourists. Some of the footage was filmed using hidden cameras. These are freshwater turtles known as tarikayas, and this infant black caiman can grow up to several meters. Both species are under threat. We've come with primate expert and activist Noga Shani to look for monkeys, and before too long, we find some. This is a tamarind monkey and this is pygmy marmoset. And they're very, very young. They need the mother. The woman is giving them probably uh, feeding them on meal. Do you think they'll survive? Without their mother? Not many of them. The woman doesn't know how to keep them alive, but as soon as they sell them, a lot of them uh, die in the first few weeks because they really need their mother and they need a special meal. Yeah, it's very sad. A lot, a lot of them die. A lot of them uh, catch them. They have to catch the mother. Many times they kill the mother. Many times they just. How much is she selling them for? She wanted the 50 sol for it. How much is that in dollars? About 15 dollars. The important thing is to know that never buy these animals because uh, when you buy them you maybe feel that you can save them, I can save them. If I save this life, this woman will understand that the uh, no green or white people, they like to buy animals and they keep taking more and more animals from the wild. Goods and produce from all over the Amazon arrive to these labyrinthine streets via a network of rivers. And that includes wildlife. We ask to see bigger monkeys, and we're taken a short distance down river to see this man. It's a typical house in Belen with some more unusual residents. Six species of monkey, from this squirrel monkey to a musmuki, or nocturnal owl monkey. He asks for around $70 for this baby woolly monkey, then he halves the price. Problems with the authorities can be settled with cash, he says. So he can bribe the police? Yeah, of course. I the the ecology. Y ecología ya me interviene y una que me interviene a ecología también ya y si no hay este no salgo de eso yo no le saco a mis animales así. Por el boy. Por el coche. Pero cuánto cuánto quieren para el la. Este? ¿Cuánto? Bueno, según por la charapa que la charapa es el más pe, este, pesado. La yeah. charapa la charapa grande. No la charapa. La charapa, la, la charapa grande. Eso si te hallan tres cuatro animales desde ahí este lleva ya. It's forbidden. Uh, the, uh, the, the, water. the big, the big yeah. water cells. Yeah, yeah. The most in, the, in the necessary paper, yeah. Yeah, Direct you're going to the jail. <laughs> Direct. Complete los tres años. Sal tres años. Como tres años está saliendo. Y yo le digo, ¿cómo va a ser yo? Tengo mis hijos también. Estudia mis hijos. Y yo quién va a trabajar si yo no trabajo con sí. You say, what about my children? If I'm going to jail, yeah. who's going to care yeah. for my children? Who's going to pay for my children? Who's going to pay for their education? Me llaman de Lima, a ver, me dice, hermano, ¿sabes qué? Me dice, este, ah, este, yo necesito tantas especies de animales, ya, yo le junto. Y ya cuando ya está listo, ya más ya viene. De frente, viene allá, no acá. Allá todo lo quiere. Aquí no le, no dejo llegar aquí a la casa. Yeah, it's forbidden. Si no, it's I know, I'm forbidden. saying to you here. Mm -hmm. Y de esa manera que yo todo lo que es allá, viene a, a querer, que dice que no, le digo, altamente nada. Todo lo que es acá. Hoy el lagarto me han dado como 200 lagartos me han dado. Para un una albergue que están haciendo cerca del mar. ¿ves? Por ahí se ha ido sachabaques, ronzocos, tigrillos, este, perezosos, se ha ido este. Los chivis, hay otra clase de animales sí. larga esa. Especies, loros, guacamayos, sajinos, de todos les manda. ¿Y cómo lo manda? ¿En, en vuelo? ¿O? No, mamita, ellos se van por, por, este, por lancha. ¿A dónde? A Pucalpa, de Pucalpa ya va, todo, va, todo es carretera. Ah, ya, ya. Todo es carretera. Para que ah, hasta llegar. la costa. Claro, hasta la costa. Esa es la clase, no te manda de aquí. So it goes down the river to Pucalpa and then on the road to yeah, the, uh, Lima, yeah. Yeah. capital and then... According to the place. Uh, <laughs>
We say we'll return the next day to buy the baby woolly monkey. In a matter of hours, we'd found clear evidence of wildlife trafficking. So what were the authorities doing about it? Es un tema muy controversial, es un tema muy delicado acá en nuestra región, ya que esta es la zona que se ha identificado como el origen del tráfico, por lo general. De, de acá eh, salen a las fronteras, de acá se comercializa también eh, a, a los países, a las fronteras, a, a otras regiones. She added they lacked resources to do the job. El profesional es muy mal pagado y a veces esto induce a obras delictivas, ¿no? porque la corrupción es una obra delictiva. With information provided by Shani, the authorities decide to act. It's just after seven in the morning and the plainclothes environmental police and a prosecutor have come to raid the home of the suspected wildlife trafficker and seize the monkeys. They've gone inside, but apparently they can't find the trafficker, but they can find the monkeys. But before too long, he showed no resistance, was read his rights and arrested. The house was searched and his children went to find their mother in the market. Noga Shani tells CCTV what will happen next. And they open a, a file against him, no? like an investigation, which hopefully will be finished with the guy sitting in jail for a few years because this is a very serious crime that he's doing. He's been selling animals for years. He has uh, endangered animals and so everything is kind of uh, amounting to a very serious thing. How common are these kind of operations in, in Loretta? Isn't they are very uncommon. Usually there's also almost nothing. No? We managed to do it because I told her that what he told us and we, we told the story that he was talking about corruption and everything, so they are full of energy today to do it right. He knows what he's doing is illegal, but what he's doing is not unusual in the context of where he lives. It's common practice. Is it right to make an example of him, this man who's, uh, you know, clearly has a family and, and yeah. uh, a family to support? Obviously, uh, doing this to a person with a family is always very bad, it's very sad, it's very wrong, but it's not common what he's doing. He's, he told us yesterday that he's selling animals all over the world. He's selling to Colombia. He knows how to bribe the police. He knows how to bribe the authorities. It is not common. Not everyone. Some people have in their house a monkey. This is common. Selling hundreds of animals a year. And you're saying I'm collecting sometimes hundreds of animals and people from outside are coming and picking them up. This is not common. He's a, he's a serious trafficker. In the hands of the law, but it's not yet clear whether he'll get a prison sentence. Environmental prosecutor Angela Pinedo told CCTV nobody is in jail for wildlife trafficking in Peru. As he was taken to the police station, his family came alongside the motorboat, angry at his detention. <laughs> The fate of the monkeys may be clearer. If they're lucky, they could end up here in the Pilpintuasi animal orphanage. Here, monkeys roam free from hunters, among them critically endangered bald headed uacaris. They've been successfully bred here by Gudrun Spera, an Austrian who spent the last 35 years in Iquitos caring for primates. She's one of a family to these intelligent monkeys, but she worries for their future. Yeah, well, Pilpintuasi started as a butterfly farm, but then it turned into a rescue center, actually because the illegal trade seemed to get worse and worse. What we try to do here is mostly, first of all, give animals a chance to rehabilitate them, give them a good quality of life and educate people. We do guided tours, we work with tourism and with the local schools a lot, students here too, because unfortunately many people here are not conscious about the, uh, the threat that there is for the animals. What should people do when uh, someone approaches them or they see a monkey for sale in the market? They should actually, they should denounce it. Officially the laws in Peru say you're not allowed to have a wild animal as a pet, 
but people sometimes don't know, not even the authorities sometimes know or don't care. So what they should do, they should denounce it, go to ecological police and in the best case go with ecological police there. Because uh, unfortunately due to need and ignorance, uh, there is a big possibility that the policeman might not confiscate the animal, but get some money. Everyone knows that corruption harms people. But in Peru and other countries, it could be driving species of animals to extinction. The outlook seems bleak. But back in San Martin, a dedicated team vigilantly fight on. And they're getting results. Using young volunteers as spotters in a local market with hidden cameras, they identify who is selling bushmeat and swoop in. Carne de venado, ocho kilos. The people are angry. This man says instead of persecuting small hunters, they should be arresting the big criminals involved in illegal logging. But the message is sinking in. The meat, all 26 kilos, is donated to a local orphanage. Para nosotros es un privilegio contar con el apoyo de ellos siempre que nos traen algún algún alimento para los niños y nosotros felices de recibirlos. In a nearby town, this stash of stuffed animals is seized. Police suspect the owner is illegally selling them. Looking at a bunch, a lot of stuffed animals, look at them, a lot of them look quite, quite old. Yes. Obviously some of them shouldn't have been hunted in the first place, but is, that re is this really combating the, the problem of wildlife trafficking? This shows how great um, this group of San Martin is uh, working, because in other places the traffic is so big that you will never work on these little details. Now this is basically a detail, this uh, old animals, animals that we're not sure if he's selling or not, but it seems that he does sell uh, under the table. It's excellent working with this group and seeing that they, are, they don't give up, they go over and over to the same places, they talk to the people, they don't punish, they explain. The Wildlife Conservation Society has identified 383 animal species being trafficked in the last 10 years on well-worn routes for more than 40 markets. The vast majority, be they parrots or monkeys, don't survive, says the society's Giovanna Morillo. It's estimated that every 10 animals, 9 would be dying on the routes. This is because there is a hacinamiento de animales, mezcla de especies, los animales están muchos días posiblemente sin agua, sin comida, eh, pasando situaciones de estrés que en muchos casos también los inmunodeprimen, hay contacto entre especies, aparición de nuevas enfermedades. In order to break the international criminal networks that supply this illicit trade, Peru, like other countries, will have to aggressively tackle corruption. Experts agree the mega biodiverse country is a hub for the billion dollar trade which ranks fourth after drug trafficking, arms and the trafficking of human beings as one of the largest transnational organized criminal activities. Jessica Galvez is head of wildlife management at Peru's Forestry and Wildlife Service. Se sabe que se habla de millones, de millones de dólares que lo que significa los animales traficados, ¿no? Es también nos, y eso está sin contabilizar, eso es con el, la valorización de las especies traficadas, pero no se está contabilizando lo que pierde el país, por ejemplo, como recursos, porque hay especies que son reproducidas en cautiverio, en sus criaderos, que están legalmente constituidos, y entonces este, también el país deja de percibir, la, puede decir, el importe o las divisas que, que puede producir ese recurso, porque lo sacan de manera ilegal. Attitudes are changing through education. There are hopeful examples, such as this successful program to rescue orphaned manatees. These gentle aquatic herbivores were once used to adorn lagoons in people's gardens. Now the only way they can survive without their mother is being cared for here. Environmental education is having an impact, says Darwin Loja. Muchos niños incluso apoyen en los rescates, que 
Digan si su padre tiene un, una cría en una tina, un rapilleo, en forma particular es una piscina flotante con madera. Entonces, ¿qué hace el niño? Papá, ¿por qué tienes eso si acá en Quito lo cuidan? Entonces, gracias al apoyo del niño, el papá se concientiza, se humaniza y ¿qué es lo que hace? Nos llama y nosotros nos vamos a su pronto rescate porque saben que no pueden vivir sin su mamá. Scientists say the Earth teeters on the edge of the sixth extinction and organized crime is playing a part in that destruction. Changing attitudes among younger generations may be the only hope to preserve the diversity of species on our planet.